shut your eyes and see. Think you're escaping and run into yourself. Longest way round is the shortest way home. His heart danced upon her movements like a cork upon a tide. He heard what her eyes said to him from beneath their cowl and knew that in some dim past, whether in life or reverie, he had heard their tale before. History is a nightmare from which I am trying to awake. I will tell you what I will do and what I will not do. I will not serve that in which I no longer believe, whether it calls itself my home, my fatherland, or my church. And I will try to express myself in some mode of life or art as freely as I can and as wholly as I can, using for my defense the only arms I allow myself to use, silence, exile, and cunning. You made me confess the fears that I have, but I will tell you also what I do not fear. I do not fear to be alone or to be spurned for another or to leave whatever I have to leave. And I am not afraid to make a mistake, even a great mistake, a lifelong mistake, and perhaps as long as eternity, too. Love loves to love. A man of genius makes no mistakes. His errors are volitional and are the portals of discovery. Every life is, in many days, day after day, we walk through ourselves, meeting robbers, ghosts, giants, old men, young men, wives, widows, brothers in love, but always meeting ourselves. He wanted to cry quietly, but not for himself, for the words, so beautiful and sad, like music. They lived and laughed and loved and left. Your battles inspire me, not the obvious material battles, but those that were fought and won behind your forehead. Life is too short to read a bad book. My body was like a harp, and her words and gestures were like fingers running upon the wires. Why is it that words like these seem dull and cold? Is it because there is no word tender enough to be your name? Moments of their secret life together burst like stars upon his memory. Her antiquity and preceding and surviving, succeeding Tellurian generations, her nocturnal predominance, her stolidic dependence, her luminary reflection, 
her constancy under all her phases, rising and setting by her appointed times. The forced invariability of her aspect, her indeterminate response to inaffirmative interrogation, her potency over affluent and refluent waters, her power to enamor, to mortify, to invest with beauty, to render insane, to incite and aid delinquency, the tranquil inscrutability of her visage, the terribility of her isolated, dominant, resplendent propinquity, her omens of tempest and of calm, the stimulation of her light, her motion and her presence, the admonition of her craters, her arid seas, her silence, her splendor when visible, her attraction when invisible, and yet her name was like a summons to all my foolish blood. Welcome, O oh life, I go to encounter for the millionth time the reality of experience, and to forge of my soul the uncreated conscience of my race. Her lips touched his brain as they touched his lips, as though they were a vehicle of some vague speech, and between them he felt an unknown and timid pressure, darker than the swoon of sin, softer than sound or odor. I am tomorrow, or some future day, what I establish today. I am today, what I established yesterday, or some previous day. One by one, they were all becoming shades. Better pass boldly into that other world in the full glory of some passion, then fade and wither dismally with age. Secrets, silent, stony, sit in the dark places of both our hearts. Secrets weary of their tyranny, tyrants willing to be dethroned, The supreme question about a work of art is, out of how deep a life does it spring? First we feel, then we fall. He was alone. He was unheeded happy and near to the wild heart of life. He was alone and young and willful and wild-hearted. Alone amid a waste of wild air and brackish waters and the sea harvest of shells and tangle and veiled gray sunlight. The object of the artist is the creation of the beautiful. What the beautiful is, is another question. You can still die when the sun is shining. God made food, the devil, the cooks.
let my country die for me. To learn, one must be humble, but life is the great teacher. The heaven tree of stars hung with humid night blue fruit. I wanted real adventures to happen to myself, but real adventures, I reflected, do not happen to people who remain at home. They must be sought abroad. Too excited to be genuinely happy. Hold to the now, the here, through which all future plunges to the past. What's in a name? That is what we ask ourselves in childhood when we write the name that we are told is ours. And if he had judged her harshly, if her life were a simple rosary of ours, her life simple and strange as a bird's life, happy in the morning, restless all day, tired at sundown, her heart simple and willful as a bird's heart. Have you read little and understood less? When a man is born, there are nets flung at it to hold back from flight. You talk to me of nationality, language, religion. I shall try to fly by those nets. The movements which work revolutions in the world are born out of the dreams and visions in a peasant's heart on the hillside. He lived a little distance from his body, regarding his own acts with doubtful side glances. He had an odd autobiographical habit which led him to compose in his mind from time to time a short sentence about himself containing a subject in the third person and a verb in the past tense. But we are living in a skeptical and if I may use the phrase a thought tormented age and sometimes I fear that this new generation, educated or hyper-educated as it is, will lack those qualities of humanity, of hospitality, of kindly humor which belonged to an older day. It is as painful, perhaps, to be awakened from a vision as to be born. The light music of whiskey falling into glasses made an agreeable interlude. His soul swooned softly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe and faintly falling like the descent of their last end upon all the living and the dead. This race and this country and this life produced me. I shall express myself as I am. Love understood as the desire of good for another is in fact so unnatural a phenomenon that it can scarcely repeat itself 
the soul being unable to become virgin again and not having energy enough to cast itself out again into the ocean of another's soul. He did not want to play. He wanted to meet in the real world the unsubstantial image which his soul so constantly beheld. He did not know where to seek it or how, but a premonition which led him on told him that his image would, without any overt act of his, encounter him. They would meet quietly as if they had known each other and had made their tryst, perhaps at one of the gates or in some secret place. They would be alone, surrounded by darkness and silence. And in that moment of supreme tenderness, he would be transfigured. He would fade into something impalable under her eyes. And then in a moment, he would be transfigured. Weakness and timidity and inexperience would fall from him in that magic moment. Sometimes he caught himself listening to the sound of his own voice. He thought that in her eyes he would assent to an angelical stature. And as he attached the fervent nature of his companion more and more closely to him, he heard the strange, impersonal voice which he recognized as his own. Insisting on the soul's incurable loneliness, we cannot give ourselves, it is said. We are our own 